Welcome to this presentation, Lipid Injectable Emulsion Survey with Gap Analysis. This session, The Use of Filters, is part three of a four-part series on this topic. I am Beverly Holcomb, a clinical practice specialist with Aspen, the American Society for Parental and Enteral Nutrition. The content in this presentation is based on the publication, Lipid Injectable Emulsion Survey with Gap Analysis, published in Nutrition and Clinical Practice in October 2017. The Aspen Parental Nutrition Safety Committee wanted to know more about how clinicians are using injectable lipid emulsions. The purpose of this survey was to gather data from clinicians on how injectable lipid emulsions are prescribed, prepared, and administered to patients in a variety of healthcare settings, and to prepare a gap analysis between current practices and published recommendations and guidelines. This session will focus on the survey results related to the use of filters for administering injectable lipid emulsions and parental nutrition admixtures. Additionally, I will review the best practices for using filters for administering parental nutrition therapy. In 1994, the FDA issued a safety alert that precipitate formation in parental nutrition admixtures may present a life-threatening hazard to patients receiving this therapy. The FDA had received a report of two deaths in at least two cases of respiratory distress which developed during administration of parental nutrition that may have contained a precipitate of calcium phosphate. Autopsies of these patients revealed diffuse microvascular pulmonary emboli containing calcium phosphate. The FDA safety alert recommended measures to minimize the risk of harm associated with parental nutrition therapy. One recommendation was to use a filter when infusing parental nutrition admixtures. The FDA suggested using a 1.2 micron filter for parental nutrition admixtures containing lipid. For dextrose amino acids admixtures, also referred to as 2-in-1s, a 0.22 micron filter was recommended. The 1994 safety alert did not include a recommendation for filtering lipids when administered as a separate infusion. Recently, however, the FDA amended the labeling of lipid emulsions to include instruction to administer using a 1.2 micron inline filter. Survey participants were asked about the use of filters with a variety of parental nutrition presentations by patient age. For respondents administering total nutrient admixtures to adult or pediatric patients, approximately 80% use a 1.2 micron filter. For respondents administering dextrose amino acid admixtures, most responded that they use a 0.22 micron filter for administering this type of parental nutrition to adult, pediatric, and infant patients. Less than 20% responded that they use a 1.2 micron filter. When administering lipid as a separate infusion, most respondents indicated they use a 1.2 micron filter. The most common reasons for not using a filter, as reported by respondents caring for adult and pediatric patients were, one, filters are only used in neonates, two, the high cost of filters, and three, filters were not useful for eliminating most microbes. Additionally, those respondents not filtering lipids included lack of evidence supporting this practice as a reason not to filter. Not filtering parental nutrition admixtures or lipids presents a safety concern as it increases the risk of infusing particulate matter. Some respondents indicated they were not using two filters of different sizes when infusing lipids separate from the dextrose amino acids. Instead of using a 0.22 micron filter for the dextrose amino acids, and a 1.2 micron filter for the lipids, they are using a single 1.2 micron filter for both infusions. This 1.2 micron filter is typically placed below the Y site for the lipids. This was being done 
because of two primary concerns. First was the cost of two filters. Second was concern for confusion on the part of nurses, patients, or caregivers on which filter to use for the dextrose amino acids and which filter to select for the lipids. Selecting the incorrect filter can lead to occlusion of the 0.22 micron filter when it was connected to the lipid infusion. An initial concern reported to the Aspen National Office was filter occlusion when filtering lipid emulsions as a separate infusion, especially when the lipids were administered to neonates at very slow infusion rates. In this survey, filter problems were reported for a small percent of responders caring for adult, pediatric, and infant patients. Most of these problems have not been resolved, but a small percentage of responders indicated they have discontinued using filters for separately infused lipids. The recommendations for filtering parental nutrition admixtures are to use a 1.2 micron inline or add-on filter for total nutrient admixtures and a 0.2 micron filter for dextrose amino acids admixtures. The 2014 Aspen Parental Nutrition Safety Consensus Recommendations document does not address filtering lipids when administered as a separate infusion. Since the publication of this Aspen document, the manufacturers of U.S. lipid products have revised their administration instructions to include a statement to filter all lipid infusions using a 1.2 micron filter. This recommendation to filter lipids using a 1.2 micron inline or add-on filter is also included in the Intravenous Nurses Society's 2016 Infusion Therapy Standards of Practice. The recommendation for filtering total nutrient admixtures using a single 1.2 micron inline or add-on filter has not changed. This graphic shows the appropriate setup for a total nutrient admixture with a 1.2 micron filter. To comply with the new recommendation to filter lipids, two filters of different sizes are necessary when administering parental nutrition as a dextrose amino acids admixture and the lipids as a separate infusion. A 0.22 micron administration filter is used for the dextrose amino acids and a 1.2 micron filter for the lipids. This diagram illustrates the appropriate filter setup for administering a dextrose amino acids admixture with a separate infusion of lipids. The dextrose amino acids admixture is filtered with a 0.22 micron inline or add-on filter. The second filter a 1.2 micron filter is for the lipids, which is infused by means of a Y connector placed closer to the patient than the 0.22 micron filter. Alternatively, the lipids may be administered via a separate vascular access device with a 1.2 micron inline or add-on filter. Other recommendations for using filters for parental nutrition and lipid administration are Place the filter as close to the patient as possible on the administration system. The filter and administration set should be changed with each new container. This is every 24 hours for total nutrient admixtures and dextrose amino acids admixtures. For lipids, the container and administration set should be changed every 12 hours. If a filter becomes occluded, it needs to be removed and replaced with a new one. And last, do not allow an unfiltered parental nutrition admixture or lipid emulsion to infuse. References and resources for using filters for parental nutrition administration are listed on this slide. This four-part program was brought to you by Aspen's Parental Nutrition Safety Committee and supported with a grant from Fresenius Cobby, USA.